Greetings YouTube, welcome back to the MetaNerd channel. I am Marcus, bringing you another video for Cardfight Vanguard Overdress. In this video, we will be going through the Link Joker mechanic for Brands Gate. So a little bit about the user for this faction, it's been a while since we actually introduced an anime character. The user for this Link Joker faction is Zakuza Ishigami. He is one of the Team Blackout member. After two episodes of the anime, he does seem a bit of a mysterious figure. He is also a very talented artist based on the second anime episodes. My first impression on this character is that he does have an evil face in the beginning when the anime was not actually being revealed. Turns out he's actually a very chilled guy after watching two episodes of this guy and somehow he seems to understand what the people around him for example Danji and as well as Yu Yu and of course Tomari with that out of the way the Link Joker mechanic is focusing around a heavy cost of token superior calling now of course this clan does function similar to Neo Nectar they do superior call token units with a heavy cost I would say quite enough heavy but judging on how powerful the token is I think the cost is pretty justified they do have a very very big power columns and of course since they are focusing on the superior calling tokens they do tend to have a bigger hand size and of course like seraph snow this mechanic does have a co some control options based off the set order card which we will get into later first off we have cardinal fang fovi sorry if i butchered the name by the way of course this is a generic starter kind of like the one seraph snow has uh, nothing much to really say here because i have gone through so many times of the starter there's not really much to say and of course we need to really take a moment here to actually appreciate the art by Daisuke Izuka his art is just very very nice I mean he is the artist for Chaos Breaker Dragon so yeah we, in which the great tree boss unit does bear resemblance to Chaos Break next we have the great one unit Cardinal Noid route this he has two skill auto when this unit is placed on Vanguard circle search your deck for up to one world card Reveal it and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. Second skill, continuous rearguard circle. During the battle, this unit attack or boost it. If your the world is Dark Knight or Abyssal Dark Knight, this unit plus 2k. So of course, the world card is actually the set order specifically for this mechanic. It does centers around you having a world set order. So I will get into the two world order that this unit this mechanic has later. So for this unit, of course, it is a right deck material. He is a world card searcher which is the actually the world order card he is also a 10k beater with the set order of course this is also a booster which i neglected to put there since it attacks and boosted for 10k power for the world set order we have hollowing moonlit night so you use one soul blast to play this card and put it in order zone if you play this card you get to draw a card and of course, once this card is in the order zone, if your order zone only has world cards, which is this card, the following effects are active according to the number of cards in your order zone. If you have one world card, your world will become Dark Knight. If you have two or more world cards, your world will become Abyssal Dark Knight. So of course, this one does give you one hand. It does refund you of paying one soul to gain one hand back, which is one a one for one trade. And of course, this if you have like two or more in this in the order zone, you will be able to unlock skill for most of the cards in this mechanic actually. The next world order card that we have is In the Darkness Nobody Knows. So of course, similar to Moonlit Knight, you will need to pay one soul in order to play this card in the order zone. And once you play this card, you are able to choose one of your opponent's front row rear guards and retire it. And then in the order zone, of course, similar to Moonlit Knight, they do the same thing. You do see the similar differences in these two cards, in these two world order cards. Of course, Moonlit Knight is actually a grade 2. This one is a grade 3. So you will not be able to play this card until you write your grade 3s. This card also allows the whole mechanic to have a con somewhat of a control options, although really limited. But then a control option is very, very good for you to like retire something in the front row. For example, Virina Valiente. Otherwise, this card really does nothing, I would say. This card will, will be played lesser than 
Moonlit Knight because Moonlit Knight will be able to let you draw one card in replace of playing that card. Continue on, we have the Great 2 unit, Cardinal Noid Cubicia. I think I butchered that name. <laughs> it has two skill, Auto, Vanguard Circle. When a world card is put into your order zone, Choose one of your units and it gets 5k until the end of that turn. Second skill, continuous on rearguard. During your turn, if your world is Abyssal Dark Knight, this unit gets 5k power. So this one on your grade 2 turn is gonna generate power to one of your rearguards or even himself in order to hit 15k, which is not too bad, I would say. And then the second skill will require you to have two world order in your order zone in order to unlock. So basically this unit is actually a 15k beater but then i would say this unit does not really seem like it's gonna be a meta breaking unit it seems kind of replaceable with other better skill but then of course we are, this is only bt01 next of course we have the boss unit and of course i did mention that this is the chaos breaker <laughs> for overdress. You can see the whole scythe thing and of course it does look like a dragon or sort, I think. Cardinal deals Orphis. It has two skill, continuous, vanguard, rearguard, vanguard circle and rearguard circle. During your turn, if your world is dark knight or abyssal dark knight, this unit gets 5k power. Second skill, active, vanguard circle. If your world is abyssal dark knight, Cost counter blast 2 and call up to 3 shadow army token to rearguard circle. Your world changes when you play a specific order. Shadow army has power 15k and boost, which is this card. So Orphis is a 18k beater without a boost. If you have a world set order in your order zone, does not matter either you have one or two, it does still gains 5k, even on the rearguard circle. This is the only token generator. Even though this mechanic does says that they do center around the token this is the only unit that actually superior calls token i mean judging by how powerful the token is you do have to understand <laughs> if you're able to call a token in the early game it's a 15k beater and if you do able to call two it's gonna be really devastating each uh, each token can hit for either a 15k or a 30k column with two token and of course, this is not taking into account the Persona right, which you will hit for 40k without any trigger. Ugh, this is gonna hurt. But then of course, uh, Counter Blast 2 is not a cheap cost. However, there are some cards that actually help Orpheus do his job of superior calling tokens which bring us to the synergy the first card we have is actually this kaiju burning monster bulba mine so the way this unit works is that at the end of the battle that this unit boosts if you have a set order in your order zone you can put this unit into the soul and counter charge so the counter blast 2 can be reduced because since this unit does refund your counter blast 2 it's a instant staple in both orifice and as well as seraph snow next we have is the rapid charger when the attack this unit boosts hits, you are able to soul charge one. This deck does use quite a little bit of soul, depending on how consistent you're getting your set order. Because each time you play a set order, it's a soul plus one. It is a very, very nice tech option with, and also will give some pressure to your opponent into guarding this unit. Next, of course, is the casualty as I will it. This does needs you to soul plus one and gives 10k power to the vanguard. Pretty, pretty decent. In the case where you actually do not get any world order and you do not play any world order, you can actually put this and play it to get to give 10k power to Orphis. Since your rearguards is gonna hit for big numbers, most likely your opponent is gonna save the, their sentinel for the rearguards instead of your vanguard. By giving power to the vanguard actually baits your opponent to actually guard more if they are not using the sentinel. So something to really think about and this is an interesting choice to actually put into your deck and test out. Next up, we have another Kaiju, which is Freezing Monster Drumier. When this unit is placed on Rearguard circle if your world is abyssal dark knight counter blast one soul bless one and draw one this card is actually similar to seraph snow great one right line which which it does give you one counter blast but then of course you do you do start to see why i say rapid charger is a great synergy because casualty does use one soul your both world order does use one soul this kaiju also use one soul so you get what i'm going here good so this card gives you one more chance to actually get your key pieces for the next turn of course most of your rear guards are gonna consist of shadow army token which is gonna be better for better than all this rear guards actually finally we have the 
sort of, I think this is another kaiju. Martial Arts Dragon, even the name is Narukami. Gore Dog Dragon. When this card is being discarded during your turn, if you have a set order in your order zone, counter blast one and call it to the rear guard. This can actually help you like put on some aggression in the early game. If you do discard this, even if you are, when you are riding a grade two, if you discard this and ride the grade two, you can actually counter blast one and call this unit out just to kind of like put on some early aggression to your opponent. This that this card is actually really really great. Just that it kind of falls off in the late game and you will not really want to use him. This is most likely just a tech in just to kind of like put on some aggression in the early game. Of course, when we move to the strength, which is quite a lot actually, this whole mechanic does has lesser reliant on key pieces. It does not really, it does not really require you to have certain specific cards in order to pull off your combo, since you will be able to call out three really, really strong rear guards to attack with. So, which in itself is very, very good. The token is of course more powerful than your whatever cards that you're putting in your deck. I mean, 15k right off the bat, it's much better than most of your things. You will have a constant big power columns, which is like 15k, 30k at the minimum. This token generating mechanic does help save the hand size a little bit, which will make you kind of a bit more defensive than other nations since you're not you're not really using a lot of hand cards to actually call your stuff out because most of them are gonna be token. This mechanic does have a limited control option just that by using the world order card, this mechanic is actually a natural enemy for Seraph Snow. If you limit the amount of stuff that you actually call to the board and you keep on calling the token, even if those tokens get imprisoned into the prison, they are token. Once they are moved to other places other than the rearguard circle, they're gonna disappear. However, there are some key weakness to this nation is that this nation actually has a counter blast issue because after once or twice of using Orpheus skill, you might not have the counter blast to actually use Orpheus skill. Since it's counter blast 2, your opponent will be encouraged to actually damage deny you or restrict the counter blast that you receive and therefore weakening your turn. The second world order is kind of RNG because you are guaranteed to have at least one world order based on the right line. The other world order you will need to get it from the deck or a mulligan. So it's kind of a double edge but then with the amount of draw that this deck has i think this one is still minor weakness but then of course rng is still an rng since this mechanic does have a very strong rear guard it makes sense that the weak one of the weakness is actually a three attack deck i mean the power is already absurd if they give a multi attack to this mechanic it's gonna be very devastating and that is all for this video do let me know down in the comment section on how do you feel about Orph? Does it reminds you of Link Joker? Do you like the Shadow Army tokens playstyle? Most importantly, are you getting this mechanic and play with it? Like and subscribe if you like this video. And remember to ring the bell notification so that you will know as soon as a new video is uploaded. With that said, I'll see you all on the field.